Next, we have um, Rolling Loud happened over the weekend in Miami. Um, that went out off without a hitch. If you just uh, discount, you know, one of these female rappers eventually catching COVID and maybe potentially giving it to a whole host of people that attended the event. That aside, it went off pretty much without a hitch, even though I think prior there was a stage that collapsed so they had to kind of rebuild again. But um, fairly good. But one thing that was kind of evident watching the shows or watching the different sets and stuff was, number one, they do a really good job of giving each kind of performer basically maximum, I think is like 50 minutes, 45 minutes. I think most... Um, hip hop artists, R and B artists, probably can't sustain a show longer than that, especially on a stage that big, especially with a crowd that diverse. Who probably aren't all there to see the same person. They're probably just there because it's a bargain. You pay for rolling loud ticket anywhere between what a hundred to two hundred dollars, whatever, or three hundred dollars. It's still worth every penny that you're gonna get because you're gonna divide that cost per each rapper that you like. If it's five people. You know, an, uh, an easy ticket to go see somebody play, even, you know, at a small venue, you're still going to pay $50. So you're still going to make, you still kind of make your money, not make money back, but it's still going to be well worth your while going to a festival like that than it will be to go into individual shows. So they made Rolling, Mad, Rolling Loud Miami, sorry, do a really good job to ensure they keep the set short, hold people's attention, of course, attention, you know, goes all over the place. And it also lets the artists come and bring their A game from the jump. They can't warm up or anything. It's just to go straight into the hits and just smash them out, smash them out, smash them out. One person who I forgot had many, many hits was Louis Vert, who's featured on here, Rolling Loud Miami, the 10 best things we saw, right? I forgot how many hit records like legitimate hit records Lil Uzi has in his catalogue that came out, I don't know, let's say maybe more than two or three years ago, right? Not even stuff that's like super recent, stuff that come out back in his mixtape era that still rings, that still goes off, right? And it was really cool to see. The only thing that wasn't cool to see, somebody like himself, again, the outfit was amazing, head to toe and Rick, and I think he did the braids as maybe as an ode to Exotexentacion. I'm not too sure if he did, but maybe he did. But the only thing that was really annoying about it was the lack of performers performing with a... Uh, with a non-vocal backing track right and that basically means they're basically just screaming over their mp3 that you already have on your phone and i found that i don't it's weird to say i find it disrespectful but i did find it like a waste of time like why would you just go on stage to basically be the hype man of your own record and not actually perform it it didn't really make any sense and i think that mainly becomes from the side from my experience mostly comes from my kind of interest in all music and going to see bands play in indie bands and alternative acts and whatnot and for the most part the live experience is always different from what you hear on the record it's always kind of a bit more improv i think of a good example is like mac demarco you go see mac demarco perform no one performances are the same he riffs and goes into different kind of you know bridges and stuff and goes on crazy on certain performances adds and chops changes stuff changes the lyrics here and there he just provides you a different you know experience with on the live performance because he knows you listen to the mp3 you don't need to have the exact experience via mp3 or if you do just sing it right without having the backing track without having the mp3 just playing as a bed because it just sounds weird because you can clearly hear these guys screaming over a track that they can obviously kind of not hear on their monitors that well and then the crowd is repeating it back to them as well. It just sounds so, so bizarre. So that was one of the things that was a real letdown in terms of overall performances and makes you think if like, is it really worth it to go to see a hip hop person that you're into perform live, like in all actuality? If you think about the money spent, if you think about the other abundance of acts that you could see in other genres, would your money best be best spent going and just trying out a different genre or going to a different festival and just seeing Wagwan over there? Because rap shows seem a bit dead and they seem really dependent on the crowd too, right? Because I think there's a video that went viral of like Coyle Ray performing at some place. I think even Rolling Down, she did it as well, where the crowd didn't seem that receptive, but also the crowd just seemed dead overall. And unfortunately, there's no way of kind of amping up a hip hop crowd if they don't want to be amped up. If they're just there to vibe and just kind of see you perform, they'll just see you perform. Um, but then sometimes when the acts are performing on stage, it just doesn't really seem like a show. It just seems like somebody that you recognize from, you know, obviously being a fan of their music, standing on stage, screaming over a track that's already you've got on your phone or you've got on your MP3 player. It just seems like a bit of a waste of time. So that was a bit disappointing to see. Um, I would like to see a lot more artists kind of, you know, be able to perform without a vocal backing track. I remember one of the reasons why I was told that doesn't happen more often was because when they make the tracks, they don't, they don't, yeah, I was just supposed to be told to put, because of the turnaround and because of the, you know, 
short attention span of listeners they tend to just make tracks really quickly and they don't have time to basically um take away the vocals on the on the record itself and make a proper sort of rec a proper bed that they can use for a live performance they just tend to just go whatever they have and then by the time it's time to perform live you don't want to go back to the studio to re-engineer stuff it's going to cost you money it's going to take time so you just go with what you have and just hope if you just lower the lows on your dj flim whatever if the dj lowers the lows on the mixer lowers the highs in the mids on the mixer then hopefully it can kind of drown out some of the vocals but it doesn't really work too well i don't think so um in all actuality um it's got some pictures here that people took from rolling out itself you've got the baby here preparing to hit the stage his performance was pretty decent i'm gonna say he's got a lot of stage presence i'd say maybe not so the performance overall but his presence was pretty good moray sounded pretty good as well standing live um unfortunately for him as well playing with the mp3 track at the back so it kind of took away from his talent as a vocalist itself you didn't really get to hear his range as he was performing um next picture Har jack harlow was a surprisingly good performer i'm not really the biggest fan of his music i've got to be honest i think it's all a bit one note and a bit boring but i still think as a performer he did the best because guess what no no vocal backing track he had this weird thing where he had this really interesting thing that he did where the verses were left empty so he could actually perform them live but then there'll be parts of the ad libs on the hooks that he kept like he kept in so basically i think that may be to help him with the timing to make sure that he knows when to come in and when not to come in and his performance was awesome he did some really cool swag stuff where he kind of stepped off the stage and just walked around to kind of touch everybody that was really kind of um ego you know there's a lot of ego and bravado in that you know i'm the shit and that was a really cool moment to see he didn't even do nothing he just kind of walked around the stage wasted five ten minutes and just jumped back on and kept on performing so that was pretty awesome to see so big up jack harlow for that one he's definitely made a fan of me in that regard even though again i'm not the biggest fan of his music i thought his performance was pretty good what's the next picture here who else they've got here featured they got a picture of kodak black he was obviously a great performer it was not surprising to see him get the most love out of everybody on stage obviously being a miami native he's is it miami or florida wherever he's from but i think somewhere around there right i think people are very familiar with his music because they were singing all of his stuff back to back like and you know look i mean kodak black is you know it's phenomenal rapper one of the super talented super underrated but he's not got the most um you know easy on the ear rapping style so for people to know every all of his bars bar for bar was really cool to see so big up him on that regard he really smashed it brought out tory lanes as well who got a really great reception on stage all things considered with him um next one got a picture of some fans in the crowd uh we've got a picture of rico nasty she did supposedly pretty well again i'm not that familiar with her music but she performed really well but you can tell that she's probably somebody that favors live performances and did really well there ken the man i'm not really that familiar with as a rap person rapper Coyle Ray was an interesting one, isn't it? Coyle Ray is really an interesting and an enigma that I think her record label need to figure out what to best do with her because quite clearly on the internet and kind of in terms of creating viral content in terms of stream she seems to be smashing it loads of loads of her records seem to rack up like millions and millions of players on spotify she's got a lot of followers right people seem to engage and like her personality even though she can be a bit cringe but for some reason whenever she performs live on stage it doesn't seem to translate and it's interesting because i think she did a performance on jimmy kimmel was it jimmy kimmel one of those shows and she did like a live performance sort of thing when COVID was happening and obviously there's no audience members. So they did these really cool, immersive kind of produced music, live music video type things. She did some performance. I think it was a, for that song called No More Parties in LA or something, one of those songs. And it was really good. She performed it live, I think, for some extent. Maybe the track was still playing. But I thought as a show, as a performance, it was really, really incredible. And I, would, and I just imagined that that was going to be the same sort of energy that was going to be put back into her live performances but for some reason it didn't really end up happening but then also there seems to be a disconnect i'm not too sure why people just seem to just have it in once they have it in for her but it just seems like the, whenever the crowd sees her on stage they don't seem to get hype and go crazy and that, it can't be because of the tempo or the vibe of a song because i've seen billy eilish go on stage and you know talk about cutting herself and shit you know with music that's like 72 bpm and people are going insane over it so it's not the tempo it's just something about her that people don't seem to connect with and 
the, the record label needs to figure out a solution because it's a bit of a waste to have somebody really popular online and you can't translate that into live performances. Maybe it requires having to go out and perform her own shows in front of her own fans and then have that footage uploaded and then have fans basically be like, oh, okay, this is how we should be behaving. I don't know if it's one of those kind of micro sort of, you know, nudge, 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 nudge things that way. Just kind of in un, kind of um, subliminal things that you throw out. I'm not too sure. But either way, she's an enigma that I don't really seem to figure out what's exactly happening there on stage because in terms of overall package she has everything i think she's got the charisma she's obviously very social media savvy in her she kind of promotes and markets herself the songs although not for me tend to kind of vibe with the current generation the melodies the way baby voices um but for some reason when she goes on stage people just don't really give a shit and i think rolling loud was a really big reminder as to why the top people are the top people and why the ones up and coming need to a lot of work to be done um, in order to kind of get to that level because there really was a lot of um realization of what the actual levels are when it comes to performing on those sort of stages here's the next picture we've got little tj again with somebody that i didn't really listen to that well but he got a really great perform really got response sorry, from the crowd maybe because he's similar sort of age to a lot of the guys that are there watching maybe again i don't really know but people seem to really vibe with him he's an interesting one from just a visual point of view because on social media for some reason he even looks really small or really tall when he was on that stage he looked like he was like six foot three and i typed in his height on google and it told me he was five eleven five ten i don't know how tall how tall little tj is but he's um he, he's, he's a confusing one in that respect visually but he got a great response from the crowd so that's all that matters in that respect um what else picture they got here then we'll quickly move on bada bing we've got a picture of ruby rose she did pretty well performance wise her flo millie city girls were very impressive at the rolling that i thought um in terms of responses from the crowd i forgot you know how many girls actually tend to listen to a lot of girl girl rappers and whatnot it kind of goes off my head because i tend not to listen to that kind of music because you know it's just not for me but that was cool to see in that regard especially considering the amount of stick that she was getting for being featured on the xxl um list what the, of the up, up and coming artists come, whatever it may be what they call it whatever that list is that everyone seems to give a shit about that kind of went and gone didn't it this year more pictures of fans again loads of kids that was great to see having fun letting their hair down after a pretty tumultuous year i don't know who that is oh that's moray there the baby was obviously created a bit of a viral moment with his comments <laughs> about homosexuality and stuff that was fairly weird don't get me wrong but again you know freedom of speech and all that let him say what he wants um i thought his performance was fairly strong he has a very good straight presence he seems that somebody you could tell when somebody's been grinding like you know doing local shows performing in bars and whatnot and restaurants and you know shitty festivals because he can really perform he kind of reminds me of like an old school like a method man or a red man in terms of his stage presence he really held those guys in the palm of his hands and obviously he's got hits for days so it was easy to run through all of them so that was awesome to see uh what else we got here come on who else is here Let's move on. These pictures are taking ages to load. We've got Cash Page, who supposedly did really well too. She got a great response. Somebody, again, who I'm not really that familiar with, I just live here on features, but people seem to really resonate with her and uh, on the stage. That was awesome to see. And one of the baby's dancers stretching. But yeah, overall, a pretty decent show. I was a um, fan of it. Um, little, was it Young Fug announced the release of his new album called Punk that's going to be coming out soon? That looks phenomenal. I think that's also kind of a pre um that also kind of reson what kind of tied in with news and he's going to do an npr with uh travis baker travis barker sorry on the drums as well live performance is going to be pretty cool um they've got here the top 10 list of events that they thought it was good from rolling stones they thought the best radio was travis scott he did pretty well performance wise but you know you're going to get with travis little baby was awesome freaks performance lato best set list was megan the stallion not too sure about that one um the best debut was moray again not too sure about that one sentimental bobby schmurder for sure there's an interesting one because most of the kids there probably don't know who bobby schmurder is they probably know him for the meme but there is a bit of a gap there in terms of the amount of attention he gets on social and the amount of coverage he gets in terms of a personality with the music there's not really a lot of music and since he's been released from prison we haven't really heard anything new from him allegedly that's because he's got some label issues happening that's why the music has been a bit stagnant at the moment but it was just great to see somebody who quite clearly had their whole life ahead of them 
it was put on pause for a brief period of time because you know they got um, caught up in whatever lifestyle they were in and then were able to come out at a good enough age to still enjoy the fruits of whatever labor they did forward they put forth before and I think because he went at such a pivotal moment especially such a pivotal time and people are making you know money hand over piss and hip-hop with streaming and live shows he's probably in a place now which I think I could say with no with kind of a good certainty that he probably is never going to go back to prison again like having that feeling of being on stage with your friends him wearing a I think it was like a Tom Brown tracksuit thing with a top and a shorts and Pradas and jaws glistening and smiling and doing that dancing that he does and you know um, mobbing out with his friends on stage like that felt like a victory that felt like a great way to kind of conclude the you know a very tumultuous year or so that he's had come you know being all these kind of false release dates and then finally getting out so i think that was a great way to kind of cap it all off and of course young fugs all pink outfit was phenomenal to see from afar but yeah rolling loud you know rolling loud was pretty good it went it went okay it went off without a hitch but like i said it was maybe a great reminder a refresher that maybe going to hip-hop shows isn't necessarily worth the money that these people are charging and maybe if you are going to the show you're not exactly going because you want to see a performance you're just there because you want to see your favorite artist in the flesh kind of feel them touch them and all that malarkey it's less so about the quality of their music or the quality of performance and more so just being in their same space as them and being able to take your own pictures and maybe get a selfie you know those kind of things people want to do more so than the quality because the performances for hip-hop shows are diabolical going by what we heard on rolling loud i would say that with all certainty